We're rolling. Welcome to the REI Rookies Podcast. The Real Estate Investing Rookies Podcast, episode number 48, where we invite you to follow us on our journey towards financial freedom using the power of real estate. I'm Josh Koth. And I'm Jack Haas. And here at REI Rookies, we believe in a couple key principles. Number one, the best way to retain information is by teaching it to others. And number two, a rising tide lifts all boats. We're not competitors, we're a community. So let's get into some real estate investing. Well, this week we're going to talk and tackle the concept of consistency. And it's a pretty exciting topic, right, Josh? Very. So um, this is spurred from... uh, well, recently I happened to hit, listen to a uh, new episode of The Grind, our buddies over at Keller Williams, mm. and they were talking about this type of concept as well, and I'm going to kind of dip into my quote of the week, but they actually said, do what other people's won't so you can get or achieve what other people's people don't. People's, huh? People's. <laughs> and if you don't think I'm going to leave that in here, you're That's, mistaken. Uh, I know you will. <laughs> yeah, that that's so true. I mean, when any type of sales job and really real estate is marketing, right? That's what we're doing. You're trying to get in touch with people, with sellers. If you're trying to buy deeply discounted properties, you're talking to a lot of people before you find somebody willing to sacrifice equity. So, you know, you hear no a lot. So you have to Uh, just perform consistent action. That really is the key. So uh, we've learned over the last couple of years that the importance of that. So uh, we just kind of lean into that, right? And just understand that that's the actual work. That's that's how this business gets done is through consistent action of sometimes seemingly mundane or uncomfortable activities. And like they said on the grind, uh, you have to be willing to do what other people won't. Like what's, you know, when you think of sales, uh, cold calling, right? That's probably like the worst thing that people imagine. Uh, But if you do that consistently, you're going to do business. I mean, there's just no denying it, but most people aren't willing to do that. It makes them uncomfortable. They don't enjoy it. Nothing's fun about it. They get hate rejection, uh, all those reasons why they won't perform consistent action and as a result they don't aren't as successful so if you're willing to do that though on the flip side is you you almost can't not be successful it's just almost a guarantee if you're doing it properly yeah so you know a good example is that cold calling let's say you have a you know consistently that you could get one deal for every hundred phone calls that you get and that deal is going to net you at least twenty thousand dollars. Right. Wouldn't it be good to know that statistic so that you can work towards that goal? So if I know I'm at ninety nine, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to hit that hundredth call in order to get get my financial goal taken care of. Or more importantly, I'm not going to stop at seven. Right. Which is when most people give up. Yep. You know, really early on when you're pretty far away from where the success is, and people give up so early. And you don't realize the, you know, the numbers that it takes. Obviously, you want to refine your processes and increase the percentage of, you know, ones that are successful. But when you're starting out, especially, you just have to get out there and do it consistently and force yourself to set up a system that makes you do it. Otherwise, you can't just avoid it. And, you know, one of the kind of metaphors that, that I like to use is weight loss or the gym, right? Uh, if you're, you know, you starving yourself or you're eating right, eating salads and, you know, you're going to the gym. Um, if you just like do a few sit-ups and eat a salad, you know, that's, you're not going to lose any weight. You might lose some weight that day, but what it takes is consistent performance, right? I mean, if you just eat a little bit less of the right things every, you know, consistently, that's how you, you know, over time, you might just lose a teammate of weight every day, but that adds up to pretty big amounts over the long term. And it seems like people want short term, quick results. And when they don't get it, then they just give up, right? That's why, you know, the, all the gym memberships that from the New Year's resolutions, you know, it's, fe- it's mid February, they're all, <laughs> people have stopped going already, I'm sure. Yeah, that's a, it's a, that's a great analogy because how many people, you know, I'm not going to, we're not going to say or, or blanket this. I mean, getting, dealing with real estate isn't an easy job. I mean, you no. have to go through those reps 
just like the gym. And surprisingly, when you first start and you're making those cold calls, that first 10 is going to feel like 100. I mean, it's, it's going to feel brutal. Also, consistency builds confidence, right? That's the title of this episode. And that's so true because, you know, when you, I remember when I f- sent out my first marketing that wasn't to people on the MLS, it was to off market properties. And then I got my first call. I was like, oh my God, what do I say to this? These people are going to hate me. They're going to think I'm trying to steal their house. You know, it's, they're going to be angry. And you're almost hesitant to return those calls. You put it off, you delay, and then, you know, it's just, you're not performing that consistent action. But if you do it, now I'm not afraid to talk to sellers if they're really angry. I just say, sorry, I apologize. I'll take you off our list, no problem. And, you know, don't waste your time. And if you're speaking to the ones that are interested in possibly really selling their house at a discount, then great. And that's just what you have to do. So if you do it enough times, it builds that confidence. So you're not afraid to take those calls or make those calls. Well, you going back to your analogy of the gym, I mean, you got to put in those reps. Mm -hmm. If you want it to become easier, if you want to go the distance, whether you're a runner or weightlifter or what have you, if you want to achieve those health goals, it's just, it's just like that. You have to put in the reps. Right. You know, I, I remember um, when I was on first time around, you know, it, Josh remembers uh, my weight loss challenges, <laughs> but <laughs> my wife still laughs at the time when I thought I was going to get into shape and, and, the first thought I had was not to change my diet, but to try to go run for a mile (laughs) right off the bat or or you go for a run. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't get down the block and back with, I was back upstairs dry heaving in the, in the bathroom. (laughs) It was just a terrible situation, Mm -hmm. but I didn't ease into it. I didn't build up those reps that were needed to, to commit to that level. So when you, when you, you just fail before you even start. Yep, exactly. So, and, and it's okay to fail. And that's the thing. If you talk to your first 10, 20 sellers and you're horrible at it and you lose all the deals because of you said horrible things and were stammering and didn't know what to say and were turned them off in some way, that's fine. Uh, just keep at it. You're, it's going to be less scary. You're not going to be uh, as hesitant, you're going to, you know, work that muscle and all of a sudden you're, you know, f- instead of you're curling the two pound weights, you're, you're up to 10, 15, 20, 30, mm-hmm. you know, you're curling the big weights after a while and he actually makes a difference. Mm-hmm. Another example to keep with the weight loss and gym and all that. Uh, I think I saw there was like a Buzzfeed article or something about these guys were going to see if they could change their physique. And they just said, well, I'm, I'm just going to do a hundred pushups a day. I don't care if I do one at a time or groups of 10, but they're just going to do a hundred a day. And they did it solid for, I think it was like, I don't know, six or eight weeks or something. Mm-hmm. And it was amazing the difference it made at first. They couldn't even barely get the hundred done in an entire day, even doing like five at a time. It was just painful and they had no strength. And I mean, most people can't really do a good push up. but by the end of the time it was easy. They could easily do a hundred a day. And that was just because they did it consistently and they forced themselves to just complete it. So it just gets easier. You know, that's, that's the main goal. Yeah. So, you know, one of those things that get, that a person has to really get over is that mindset again. And our minds typically will automatically go to the worst case scenario. Right. But when you think about it, like what is going to be the worst case scenario when you call or do a cold call? They're going to yell at you and how the hell did you get my information? You suck. You're evil. I'm suing you. I'm calling the cops. That's really as bad as it gets, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it, and that's actually fairly rare, really. Mm-hmm. About it. Um, most people are going to be pretty polite about it, especially when they realize it's a real person. They're used to dealing with robocalls all day long. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, I mean, our, our numbers are published on the internet and what have you. And the amount of robocalls I know you receive are, are just ridiculous. Yeah. Just cause I have my cell phone number because of having a photography studio for years, my numbers everywhere. So, I mean, I get five to 10 of those a day just from a robot, you know, it's just annoying. So, you know, thinking about the worst case scenario, isn't going to get you anywhere other mm-hmm. than preventing you from doing it, you know? And when you think, when you really think about it, the worst case scenario is pretty minor. I mean, 
it's it's not really going to end your world when it comes to yep. So let's talk about a couple examples of how this relates to real estate. Obviously, we talked about cold calls, talking to sellers, but another example is MLS offers. Okay, so I try to write an offer a day on a property on the MLS. That's kind of my threshold, and just by doing that, I mean, okay, that's five a week, right? You know, like twenty a month, right? I mean, that's that's quite a few offers in a year. So, you know, if one out of every 50 is accepted, well, I don't know how many of that is in a year, but that's probably two or three deals right there just from that one strategy. And a lot of times one is the minimum. I think we wrote three today, you know, so you just have to perform that consistent action. And it's a, it's a mindset shift because a lot of times people will say, well, you know, when you're starting out, you think why would anybody ever accept this ridiculous offer? That's literally like half of their asking price. And it's the first day in the MLS. And I say, well, 99 of them won't, but one of them will at least talk to you. And then maybe you can negotiate meet somewhere in the middle and find a deal that's profitable for you and a win, win for them. You take a property off their hands. You know, it's the needle in the haystack. You got to, but the only way you find that needle in the haystack is by, you know, just consistently taking a piece of the haystack and going through it and moving it over here. And, you know, once you work your way through methodically, uh, you, you will find the, the needle or the deal. Right. And another example is our uh, Facebook marketplace, Craigslist, all of those type of posts. There's so much noise online these days that the only way you're going to get noticed in those scenarios is to be consistently posting on a regular basis. You know, I'm, I'm doing, I'm running three different ads right now on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And uh, Josh pointed out uh, today that uh, when you go to a gallery view on some of these marketplaces, I'm taking up three or four of the spots in the (laughs) six that he was seeing. Right. Um, You only get to that point when you're posting something every single day. Multiple times a day, yeah. And there's there's no way to avoid seeing our ads. You know, the, they're going to get eyeballs on them. And when you're trying to, you know, sell a property or a, attract a certain type of, you know, lead or whatever, you just, that consistent action is what's going to deliver results. So you just have to find a way to systemize that, automate it, make it as easy as possible so you don't procrastinate and, you know, take your, talk yourself out of it, let yourself slack. You just have to keep keep it up. And, you know, our philosophy, especially when we're selling a property is, you know, we pursue every avenue until a deal's in hand and a a check's in hand, right? Mm -hmm. Even if something looks like it's going to happen, we don't stop with the other methods. We just keep the pedal to the, to the floor until the deal's done. And it, it, that works for a couple of reasons because it, just exposes your deal to the most amount of people. And and it also maintains leverage on any fence sitters. So if you have somebody that's thinking wishy-washy and they have a lot of time to decide, well, if they know that you're marketing this deal to a ton of other people, they're going to be forced to act and much more likely to, you know, not back out or not second guess. They're just going to, they're going to follow through and you maintain that leverage all the way through. So that's how another way that consistency can benefit you as an, as an investor, especially as in a selling situation. So a couple of the things that we're trying to be more consistent around is uh, we've been starting to send simply every time we do a face-to-face type meeting, we send a thank you. Note. Right. A thank you note. Um, and the consistency there is actually going to be more long-term. Mm-hmm. You know, we've, we've met other real estate investors who have incorporated this practice and, they literally have gotten a, a lead a year later because somebody kept that that thank you note for some reason. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, it's only going to help. And it, it seems kind of fruitless at the time and expensive and a waste of time and whatever. But, you know, it's it's something that really makes you stand out too. So, and if you do it consistently, it's really going to ingratiate you to the people you're doing it for. And it can't help but be increased goodwill. Right. And then uh, things that we haven't been as good uh, good at until recently, I think we've really have taken some pretty big steps, is that those follow-ups. Mm-hmm. Follow-up is such a big, big thing. And uh, just reaching out, uh, reminding people of what you do and what you're looking for. 
Right. Um, because you're, you're always trying to farm and find those opportunities, not only within your direct network, but with everybody that you know, their direct network. I mean, it, it becomes seriously a, a spider web of people that you could be touching on a regular basis. Yeah, networking is something, you know, and just being face-to-face with people is something you really need to be consistent about. That's why we're in both in networking groups and we make a point of having face-to-faces or one-on-ones uh, weekly as well because that, that consistent behavior will pay off. And I mean, we've seen that time and time again. And so you know, when people say, well, that takes up a lot of your time, why would you do that? Well, you can point directly to deals that have been a result of those relationships you've built. So that consistency is huge. So, you know, with that all being said, uh, I wanted to call out, there was a study done not too long ago. And on average, it takes more than two months before a new behavior becomes a habit. Mm-hmm. And they, they actually found it's 66 days to be exact. Mm. And when you stop thinking about it, it could take anywhere from 18 days to 254 days, depending on the person. Wow. So it, it, when you think about it, um, yeah, we, we say 66 days, but depending on the scenario and the person, it could almost take a, almost a year. Right. For you to, it, it stops becoming a habit, but just bec- becomes part of your routine. Yeah, that takes a lot of grit, a lot of mental fortitude. So just know that that's what's ahead of you when you're setting up a new system or a new business uh, venture. That's what it's going to take. You know, if you're an insurance agent, a real estate agent, any, you're trying to build your business through relationships and like cold calling and stuff, that's, that's what it's going to take. You know, and then look to other people that are more successful in the business, look at the practices they've done and try to replicate that. And also just remember that, and this is from an article that we'll post the link in the show notes here about consistency and action. It, it, it says it's consistency and action is not purely about repetition. It's rather about evolution. So it's not about mindlessly repeating an action over and over again. It's about learning, growing, and adapting your actions that can lead to incremental improvements over an extended period of time. And so for us, you know, like talking to sellers is a perfect example. If you really suck at it and you only get one out of 200 leads closed, well, that's fine. You're still going to do deals. But if you can get one out of a hundred, you'll do twice as many deals off the same amount of marketing. And if you can get one out of 50, you'll get four deals uh, out of the same amount of marketing. So your cost per deal in marketing is way, way less. And you can spend a lot less on marketing and do the same amount of business or spend the same amount of marketing and do more business. So whatever your goals are, the better you are at it. And the more you repeat the process, you're, you're, you're gonna get better at it almost just instinctively. You can't help it. But just be aware of, you know, what could I do differently next time and try to learn from your mistakes and improve, improve that performance. So, um, once again, I'm just going to, that, that's a great way to just kind of end and summarize what's Mm -hmm. the the situation here. But, um, we're going to just share once again, um, I would definitely recommend checking out the grind podcast at some friends of ours over uh, Keller Williams. I think you, we're on that podcast not too long ago. Um, yep. And a great guy, bunch of guys. I'll put a link in the, to their podcast in the show notes. That do what other people won't so you can get or achieve what other people's don't. <laughs> right. And um, uh, I don't know where they lifted that quote. Uh, I tried to do a search for it, but it might be just something they they say or a mantra within. Mm-hmm. Keller Williams, but. Good advice nonetheless. And my quote, about consistency is from Tony Robbins. It's not what we do once in a while that shapes our lives. It's what we do consistently. And that says it all right there. So if you like what you hear, uh, head over to uh, your email, type it up to info at reirookies.com. And shoot us some feedback. Check us out on Facebook or Twitter at REI Rookies. And if you like what you're hearing, head over to iTunes, subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. It really helps other rookie investors out there find the show. And remember, get off the bench. And get into the game. We'll see you next time.